What's up, y'all? My name is D1, and right now I'm rocking with allhiphop.com. Make sure y'all check out my new album, Uno, available on all streaming platforms. Yo, what's up, guys? My name is Rose D. I'm here with... D1. Okay. Mr. Controversial. I'm not controversial. I'm we just We just bold. talked about how you were controversial. And that's your opinion. That, no, I said that's the people's opinion. When they, when you Google yourself, you're not in these streets like that. You don't, you don't know, know the where I'm at. Opinion. You okay. Don't know where I'm at. <laughs> I'm not in the streets, but I, I'm with the people, and the people, you know, that's what they say. They say that you're controversial. Yeah. And I told you, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Well, all leaders and all light bearers are controversial because we live in a world where darkness is unfortunately glorified and normalized way too much. We period. Were just, <laughs> we were just talking about how you're a teacher. Tell me about that, because you're a professor, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tufts University, you heard me? Okay. I'm a professor at Tufts University in Boston, Massachusetts. And they know your, your views and stuff. They don't have any... Are you allowed to talk about everything that you want to talk about with the kids? My course is called The Intersection of Hip-Hop and Social Change. Mm. So it's all about my views on what's going on inside of hip hop culture, but not just my views, also about the inter uh, the interworkings of how hip hop has been instrumental in bringing about social change in its first 50 years, you know? So I'm a professor at Tufts, but also. Oh, not the other shirt. <laughs> you know. I like the branding. Also. I'm also a, a, a hip hop fellow at Harvard University. I saw that. You heard me? That's so, dope. Congratulations. Yeah, so I, I I do my I do my my thug thizzle over there as well, and um, bringing hip hop to higher education is something that allows us to allows us to evolve and not just be stuck being rappers forever. You know. Okay. Okay. So with so do you cons? I know you have like a lot of viewpoints on hip hop, right? Yeah. Okay. So do you consider your music hip hop? Because I saw you put hip hop on your bio but it's like i don't know do you consider no right. i'm a country artist i'm a country <laughs> artist that that sings gospel and and i play the accordion that's so. what i was curious about because it feels like you have a love and hate relationship with hip-hop there you go you know there you saying? go but don't people have a love hate relationship with their spouse oh i hope not with their partner come <laughs> on you don't never be having bad days and, and yeah, beefed out with i wouldn't want to have any kind of hate in my relationship where well hip-hop is not that pure to where i can't have any parts about it that i don't like it's just not that pure okay. we don't even know we don't even know what the identity of hip-hop is at this stage we, I, you can't tell me what hip-hop stands for and what it doesn't stand for because everything is well, just every, it, i mean that's that's true to extent but a lot of people it, I, it, it's an artist thing right so artists are you know reflections of their times and what's going on around them some of them anyway some of them. You know I'm about it. You, you, Some of when them. When you see that mic uh, elevate, you <laughs> Some know. Some of them. Okay. Some of them. Okay. So all so out of all the artists that's rapping about uh, murdering people, uh, do you think that more than five percent of those artists have ever actually killed somebody? Definitely not. Okay. Is that not a problem to you? Mm. That's a problem to me. See, look, this is this is. I knew this was going to be interesting conversation. I I feel like it depends on the artist because there's a lot of artists that I don't connect with that that rap about that stuff. Like you know, I like obviously you know I like the Jay Z's, Lil Wayne's that have done stuff before. But then there's there's the other rapper that I'm like, mm, did you really? Did you? Wait, wait. You wait, think Lil Wayne on. has killed somebody hold on. before? I mean, I, I don't. Wait, know. wait, wait. I don't know. 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 I'm here to answer I, for you. <laughs> You Lil know. Wayne actually says it in a song that I ain't never shot nobody. Well, I not, promise. It doesn't necessarily, necessarily have to be murder. I'm just saying some of the stuff that they talk about in general. I don't want to. I don't want to indict anybody on here to yeah. what they did or they didn't do. No, but, but it's about what they. About, yeah. I'm talking about like just the the street culture in general. Like I feel like like you said, less than five percent do do that. But I do believe that a lot of people who do connect with them are the people who have done that before. A lot of people who connect with them. I would say are young, impressionable teenagers the way you and I once were who are just listening to what's popular because okay. it's all over the award shows. You heard me? It's all over the playlist. And it's like, oh, this is what's popping. So as a young person, we're we're drawn to what is negative or what is edgy. Like we, that, And that's normal to be a young person and be drawn to that. You're not trying to listen to Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood mm -hmm. and Barney and Friends as a little kid. So... That's why I feel so blessed to be in hip hop because I can provide an alternative to what's being offered out there. And that's what I've been doing. I just dropped my 10th album. You know what I mean? I saw that. And, and thank you. And I just, I'm not okay 
with yeah, yeah. Tell misleading me, what's, 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 the youth. What's like your main things that you that you're like you know, you're not with? I just said I'm not okay. No, I know with the murdering thing, but keep going. I'm not okay with any misleading of young impressionable minds. So that's the youth. I used to be a middle school teacher before I became a rapper, okay. right? And I know that as a teacher. If my students didn't know any better, I have a lot of power when I'm in that classroom to either educate them properly or miseducate them. So what if I told my students that six times six equals 43? If they didn't know how to multiply, they would take that as a fact. They would be like, bet, Mr. Augustine taught us that six times six is 43. So I just miseducated them successfully. That's what hip hop is doing a lot of times. These kids haven't lived life yet, but the rappers have these kids' attention. And with their attention, what are they choosing to do with it? A lot of them are choosing to just rap about a bunch of stuff that they haven't lived. And even if they have lived it, that don't mean you have to glorify it. You know what I mean? There's a difference between narration, glorification, and education. And too many rappers are wanting to glorify stuff that's overtly negative. And that's my problem with the culture. There's something else that you said recently that kind of went viral, and it was regarding Sakun. What's her name? I don't even know how to because I don't really follow her. But Megan Stallion and all that, and mm -hmm. the way that they they dress and they act. How do you like? What, I understand certain. Obviously, women are sexualizing themselves, right? That's been a part of hip hop for a long time, especially since Lil Kim and Foxy Brown days. Yeah. But do you really have an issue with it as an artist, or do you have an issue with the same way that you were just explaining as far as you know leading the the, the youth and all that stuff? I have an issue with it as an artist and as a leader in the community. Because as an artist, I know that that's not who they are 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right? We all have multiple sides to us as human beings. The fact that you'll choose that one side of you and you'll choose to crank it up to level 10 and over-sexualize yourself. What if that's really them? That's not them 24-7. But, but not everybody is anyway 24-7. Exactly. So, exactly. So why, as black people, do we choose to glorify and amplify the lowest version of who we are? Because they have much more to them than just saying, you know, I, I, my, feel, I feel like if my, they were here and they were explaining red, themselves. My booty hole brown. <laughs> that's crazy. My, that's you know crazy. I'm surprised that that one went, but that's crazy. But, um... <laughs> But and what's up with this? But what's nah, up? No, no, no. But my question. But if they were here right now, right? I don't think that they. I would think that they would probably say, "No, that's not who I am." But that's who I. That's how I. Ex that's how I express myself as an artist. Is is sexually. That's that's how I feel. Because Megan Thee Stallion's all her records aren't like all about her fucking. Her I, I didn't. I didn't say that. But guess what? Somebody who murdered somebody. They weren't a murderer. Twenty four seven, three sixty five. They committed right. that crime one time, and they get put in jail for life. True. For something they did one time. But when it come to rap, we say, well, that ain't who they are all the time. So we need to just focus on the side of them that they never choose to show us and glorify. But we just know that it exists. But meanwhile, what they're showing us clear as day, we, we need to find a way to be OK with that. Although that's being magnified to the masses. We brainwash, man. And people in the media know better, too. A lot of people in the media know better. But. They choose, I talk about the mental health inside the state of hip-hop a lot because there's people who will take advantage of young black people from the hood, artists, who are just trying to make it. I was once that person. I was that person that was like, man, I ain't really making no money off of music. And then here come these record labels offering me money, offering me uh, record deals. And at that moment in life, you are very vulnerable to saying, Man, I ain't never seen a check that big. What, they offering a $50,000 advance? I think I want to sign that. I want to take that. But these same people that's offering you that advance and, and offering you these record deals, they don't even let their own kids listen to that music. So what if what if Megan Thee Stallion or, or Doja or any of those artists that you did mention prior in that, um, I, in that clip, it, if they asked to do a song with you, you would say no? I would love to do a song with them. So, do you have do you have stipulations on this song? Like, would you? Oh, tell them? Of course. <laughs> do you have stipulations on on how you gonna do your job? Of course. Exactly. So, I would love to do a song with Megan Thee Stallion, Doja Cat, who else? Uh, Sexy Red, Sukiana. I do songs I with any of them. Love to see that. <laughs> but but it's possible. Cause, it's possible. Because what you Everything haven't possible. Because what you haven't seen is the song I got on my new album with the game. Mm -hmm. You know what you haven't seen is two days ago Boosie FaceTiming me. Kodak Black FaceTiming me. You know, me and Mace FaceTiming. What you haven't seen is me and Juvenile collabing. Me and Manny Fresh collabing. Me and Lupe Fiasco, Big Crit. This ain't nothing new to Lupe. me. Yeah, well, Lupe is one of my closest yeah. friends in the game, you know, definitely. But all the people I named, we've collaborated or been in touch about collaborating, you know. And the collaboration part is not hard because as human beings, there are so many levels that we relate to one another on. 
but I do have stipulations on yeah. what we would uh, rap about for just sure. Just thinking right now, I was thinking about like just the visuals that have been like, uh, as especially this past like two, I feel like it's two years, like these devil images has been like so heavy. Like even Doja's like the the horns and just in the videos, it's just see like a lot of red. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just so. How do you feel about that? And yeah. where do you think, and how is it so accepted now? Even in the black community, even like, <laughs> like I just, I'm confused by it because we're, even if, you know. Don't be confused, baby. Don't be confused. Watch even, this. Even, even if, even if you don't go to church, like the black, I feel like a lot of the black community is aware of the devil because that's like, you know, your, your auntie and your, your uncles, they teach you about that. But it's like, to me, it's just so normalized, like now in 2020. But look, peep me out. You got to crawl before you walk. You got to walk before you run. You got to run before you right? fly. Mm -hmm. So before Doja Cat gets to the point of having demonic, you know, messages in her music that's very overt, there's people who can do things that ain't small as bad, things, but it's yeah. little small things mm -hmm. that lead its way up to right. that. That's what's happening. But that's what's happening. Did you watch the uh, BET Hip Hop Awards? No, I haven't gotten a chance oh, to watch Oh, okay. It. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> so you can't relate to no, how I felt after I watched it. Yeah. Oh, it, was, it was crazy? Was it like a lot of triangles and shit? <laughs> Yo. <Excuse> my language. <laughs> it's, a, as a woman, I would be embarrassed. I'd be like, they, they call this culture's biggest night. And really? this is what, yeah, that's what On they BT? call it. They, that's, what they, that's what it's called. It's called Culture's Biggest Night. Yes, that is the tagline okay. for the BET Awards. I, mean, I think anything that we have is we have to celebrate. But I didn't see it yet, so I can't really that's speak on it. I can't speak on it. What we're choosing to celebrate, keep in mind they handpick who they want to perform at these award shows. They handpick all of the, the imagery and everything that's going to be put out there, all the props. And this is what we want to celebrate and showcase as a culture. That's a problem. The culture is sick right now, but nobody wants to like people. Ask, What's the word you use with me? I'm controversial if I talk about how sick the culture is. If that is what people call controversial, then sign me up. Then I'm 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 Mr. Controversial, but I know it's not controversial. I'm just not uh, intoxicated with the ignorance. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Once you're no, intoxicated no, no, no. with I, it. I mean, I can't I can't disagree with that. Yeah, you once you're know, intoxicated it, it, it with it. It is what it is. I mean, the industry's been in a in a weird space for a while. I just I'm just personally surprised at the the double stuff that's going on now. Like it's just so blatant. Like you before at least they would hide it and like you'd be like, Oh shit, like not not know what certain signs meant and you would actually have to do research to, to to actually, you know, educate yourselves. But now it's just like boom, it's right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you, so, can't, you can't really deny it. You can't deny it. Yeah. Exactly. That's scary. Nah, it's super scary. I'm not gonna lie. That's scary. Exactly. <laughs> Especially for you know, I, I love, I love the, I love music. I love, I love like, I just love all kinds of music. You know what I'm saying? But like, I couldn't even listen to cer certain people's whole album because I'm like, yo, what? I'm not saying that. Like any, and this this whole new thing where I'm a demon worshiper and I'm a demon. Like I, yeah. I, 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 I say sorry, God, and I just. Can't. <laughs> you know, I know. I literally say it every single time I hear, like, I'm not, like, I'm dead at, that, like, I'm yeah. serious, like. So, so what? What about uh, that's that's how I want to get when it comes to hearing murder music. Mm -hmm. When we hear music where people are overtly Meek Mill and Rick Ross just put a new song out called Lyrical Easy. I'm giving them free promo. Not that they need it, but bam, that's their new song. When I listen to it, who didn't grow up on Meek Mill and Rick Ross? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like a lot of us did. All right, cool. Let me listen to it. When I press play. And I listen to it, and I'm hearing Meek Mill talk about murdering somebody at the red light, and, and he going to do this. And I'm hearing Rick Ross still talking about moving dope and all that stuff. What are y'all doing, bro? Like I thought he was a part of that whole reform. with Jada. Exactly. So is it prison reform, or is it going to murder you at the red light? Mm. Make a choice. And I love these people. I love them as human beings, but as artists, it's just like, we can do better, yo. And I love you too much. To not be honest so with what, you. So what would you have them do not rap about that stuff anymore? I'm just asking. I'm like, be honest. Like, what, yes. what, at yes. this point, at this yes. point, does Dave? It's very you know, possible to be. I'm not saying it's not possible. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, it's what, very. That's what you would have yes. to do. Yes, because guess what? I know for sure that you could still make music. They got that same level of aggression, that same level of lyricism to where you don't have to be glorifying killing people and pushing dope to our community. Absolutely. I know it's possible because I make that music. Oh, I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just, I just music. don't know yeah. if it's realistic Yeah. to ask that. Oh, it's definitely realistic. They just don't have nobody bold enough around them. They got a bunch of people around them who are on payroll. If people work for you, the last thing they're going to do is challenge you. Mm, I mean, I would, try to, I would try to hope. I would try to They have somebody around them that is telling them what they... But I just, I don't think that they want that from themselves. So it's like... 
You know, they will have to want to do it themselves. And I don't really feel like it has to do with anybody else around them. That's, that's, I, a, that's, you know a great, that's a great point. I have faith in those type of artists and a lot of the other older artists in the game. If you in your 30s, your 40s, Lord forbid, your 50s, I feel like you've lived enough life to where you do know that there's more to you than just that. So how do you feel about Jay-Z's music? I feel like he's evolved over time. Yeah. So my first song that ever blew up was called J-50 and Weezy. Yep. yep. And out of that song, out of Jay-Z, 50 Cent, and Lil Wayne, whom I all addressed in that song, I feel like the only one whose music evolved over time was Jay-Z, you know? So, yeah, I give credit where it's due. That's, okay. That's the other thing. I was, trying to, I was trying to get some, like, you know, I positivity actually, in there. I actually, <laughs> I actually love giving credit where it's due. Like, I, Who I, else would I, you give credit I to? I love it. For evolving over time? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you got to give credit to the people who didn't even have to evolve over time because they've been, they been on this from, from early on. So big shout out to my brother Lupe Fiasco. Big shout out to the legends in the game, like, and we use the word legends so much. We want to call everybody. Some people use it a little too loosely, so I'm about right. to see what you're about to right. say next. Chuck D. Okay. KRS One. Dope. You know what I mean? Um, um. I don't, I don't know. I, I, was, I mean, it's, <laughs> and it's, we just got three people. <laughs> it's, it's slim pickings. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Females. Anybody from right. females? Uh, legendary females. Ooh, how about Lauren Hill? Oh, definitely. Yeah, thank like, you. Yeah, thank you. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But all these other people who, oh, my Queen gosh. Latifah. Why, watch this. Yeah, Queen Latifah. Yeah. Um, I have an issue with what we choose to want to celebrate inside of hip hop. For example, I love so T.I. You didn't, you didn't like, I love you didn't like the 50 years of hip hop? You, you wasn't Listen, with that? I love T.I. Okay. But the fact that you feel like it's appropriate to make a trap music museum <laughs> to to honor the forefathers of trap music wow, and y'all to argue back and forth on who's the Mount Rushmore of trap music, that ain't gangster. I'm not that, gonna lie, I went to that museum. <laughs> no, I no, I've been to it too. I've been to it too <laughs> because I'm gonna go because I'm gonna go and look and and, and keep up with what's going. On. And I love Ti, mm -hmm. but that ain't what's up. That ain't the best use of. Your talent, T.I., that ain't the best use of that amazing brain that you have. I thought it was kind of smart. I'm not you, going You know it. what it is? No, it's smart if you're a capitalist. It's like, oh, it's clever. You're going to make some money off of this. But what we are doing is choosing to memorialize and, and celebrate and honor the the people who paved the I way for trap like music. Though. I didn't see it like that, though. Well, I just you thought blind. it was, it was no, nah, I, I saw it like it was just part of a culture and he was just showcasing it. There's a lot of people who 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 never seen a trap house before. Just saying, not to say that they had to, but there's a lot of Caucasians that have never right. seen a white a, a trap house before. Okay. That was their opportunity to understand what it was, and okay. it's and even though it's not a so we're celebrating. Even hold on, Aren't even we though it, hold on, go ahead. Even though it's not positive, it's not positive, but not everything's gonna be positive about one thing. Like you can't music can't only you want music that, to that's only the be problem. But you want music no. to only be positive. That's the problem. We select what we want to celebrate about our culture. Listen, that's true. Listen, when I make rap music. I have lived a full life thus far. I pick and choose what aspects of my life I want to put on those songs and push out there That's to the true. masses. Exactly. So when it comes to trap music or drill music, and we get to the point where it's like, man, out of everything we've done in our lives, out of all of the great things we've done, we want to take this and choose to showcase this and celebrate this and memorialize this. Okay. I can understand why it shouldn't be memorialized, but I do think that it was it was like a, more of like a pop-up situation, like where it's a pop-up. Like It wasn't like a whole museum. It it's was been there for the last year. What are you talking but about? That to me is like, I don't, you would consider that a museum? It has real estate where it is planted on in Atlanta and it is open. There are employees. There's a whole staff. Yeah. There's a whole marketing team to push okay, that out there. You got there. a point. I gotta, I gotta agree with you. But I still, think, I, I don't think, I don't, I, I'll agree to disagree. I agree to the fact that maybe it shouldn't be presented the way that it was presented. But I think that it was still dope for. I think it was a good idea. I think that it was cool for people who are outside our culture never really saw those innings of that. They don't know what that is. So I think it was dope for them to actually see it and put, like, this is what these people do. Like, And it could have been presented in a different way to make it more so positive. Maybe they could have worked on their, their whole marketing thing, but I think, it was, I, th I think it was a great idea. I think it was, I mean, it might sound ignorant, but it probably does next to you. But I'm going to be honest, I, I do. I think it was dope. Word. <laughs> a lot, a lot. I mean, it's literally dope. You know, it's literally, it's literally dope. Yeah, it's <laughs> in there. It that, literally was dope. <laughs> yeah, so that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm glad you thought that. Uh, but, that's funny. but, 
But but I understand what you're saying yeah. as far as celebrating the culture and how we. I'm just. It makes sense. I mean, I get it. I I kind of get both sides. I I feel like because I'm not an artist, it's not fair for me to to speak for the other artists. Mm. But what I will say is that as a culture, I definitely think we could do better for sure. Like that's like a thousand percent. Thank you. So. Some people say that, and other people are actually putting that into action. Right. And all I'm doing is using my, because I think a lot of fans. Well, who, just for you to know, I worked on a community service show for like seven years. So, you're reaching back to the community and stuff. You're yeah, just to let you know, like, I'm not, you know. Nah, that's what's yeah. up. Um, you, you, but you, yeah, you I, so as far as the woman and, and, and sexualizing. Yeah. Would you, would you date someone who, who rap like that? <laughs> You know the answer to these questions yeah, you before never you know. ask me. You never know. Well, when you date me, you represent me and I represent exactly. you. So if that's how you're choosing to represent mm -hmm. the man that you with, and I'm a man of God, I'm a man that is all about so being like, wait, real, so what righteous, is, what is, and relevant. What, is, what does it look like dating you? What does it look like <laughs> dating you? Like, like, what, like, what do y'all talk like? It's does, the she best have to, does she have to? Does she have to dress a certain way? Does she have to dress a certain yeah, way? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I wouldn't want my woman dressing in public like a stripper. Okay. What does that look like to you? Because different people have different, you know. Definitions of what dressing like, like a stripper, yeah, looks, stripper like. looks like. Yeah, stripper looks like, yeah. If you got all of your assets, uh, uh, your voluptuous assets, <laughs> you know, being 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 put out there on Front Street, I'm serious, on, on no, a daily I know, basis. I know, I know, I yeah, know. Like, it's, it's that's pretty. just, that's just, that ain't, that ain't what's up. That ain't, no, that's not what we doing okay. over here. Um, <clears throat> and And most men will feel the same way, you know. It depends on what type of man you want, though. Right. Yeah, it depends on what type Absolutely. of man you want. So, you asking what so I think. So, if Megan now, asked you out on a date right now, would you go on a date with her? Uh, or no. Or Cardi? If no. she was married? No, I don't do the whole woman asking me out on a date type of mm. thing. You know, I'm a man, so I can be there initially. So, you would say no? Uh... Or you would just be like, yo. No, you know go. what I would like to do? I like to go get uh, I like to go get coffee with either one of them. I, and I would love to just have a dope conversation. Cardi is a married woman, so stop trying to. I make said me, if she wasn't married. I said if she wasn't married. I said if she wasn't married. Right, I right. said if she wasn't married. So I would love to go out with either one of them, not on a romantic date, because before we get romantic, I got to get to know you know where your head is mm -hmm. first. So I would love to do that. And as as powerful women who are in our culture. We all rappers, like we got a lot in common. Like, let's sit down and chop it up some. I would love to have these conversations with them, you know? Cause right now it's like I'm talking to them and referring to them and talking about them without being talk able to talk directly to them on these things. And I know the cameras don't need to be on for these right. convos, you know what I'm saying? So you could really hear from somebody's heart. And I know that, man, let me and Lil Wayne go sit down and get some coffee. Let me and Megan the Stallion or Cardi B go sit down and really chop it up. And we're going to have so much that we're on the same page about that, honestly, it it would impact the type of art that they choose to create moving forward. I know it would. I think it would. I know it would. So won't you hook that meeting up? You know, you, you the plug. Yeah. Listen, I don't know. You the plug? <laughs> Who you got? Tell me this. So wait. What artist you got? You in New York. What New York artist you got that you feel like, oh, yeah, D and this person, they probably... At least publicly, they're on different pages, but uh, like, I love to get them to sit down. Uh, you know, Link me up with Jim Jones. Really? No, seriously. I mean, Jim I is one. I know his publicist. Link me up with Jim Jones. I would love to because Jim Jones is a leader. Jim Jones is somebody who's seen a lot of success, but Jim Jones is one of the people who I feel like because he's a leader, he could do better with what he chooses to glorify at this stage in his life. Mano. Oh, I would love to chop it up with Mano. You Mano would be a dope comment. That would be a dope comment. I would love to chop it up with Mano. The way that y'all would talk, I, I know it would, be, it would be really interesting. I would love to chop it up with Mano. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I'm here for it because I don't hate anybody. It's mm -hmm. different if it's like, oh, you got beef with these people, D, or you jealous of these people. Mm -hmm. I think you could look in my eyes, and I think you could kind of feel it from my spirit. That it reminded me of the thing that happened with Lecrae. It just came to my head as soon as you said that. Yeah, like I'm not. People were saying that that's that's what. Well, I think corny people were saying that you were hating. If you really listened to the conversation, if it, it wasn't it wasn't even like that. You was just you was just yeah. really disappointed in Yo. in how he went about. Yo. Yo, he I, was so straight, and he was following, like, you know, y'all was on the same. Keep in mind, I know that. Keep in mind, I've been knowing this man for 12 years. Mm -hmm. You hear me? So it's like, 
I'm not speaking about somebody who I don't know right. and, and, and don't know like what what their aim is and what they you know and it's a lot I don't speak on with do you think situation. do you think that he just he really like he really felt that when he said that that's that it could be that and said oh you think he just did it just for like a check well being righteous and ratchet yeah no I think it was uh I think it was something if you want to know the like, tr- did yeah. You, yeah like I want to know like do you, really, core, do you I, really believe that he believed that or do you think he said it just because he not even living like that good. that's the thing yeah it's like he not even living like that he live in a suburban neighborhood with raising a family you know what I'm saying like that is man behind ratchetness mm-hmm. they got people getting murked behind ratchetness right. you know what I'm saying they got people in jail right now behind ratchetness mm-hmm. You feel me? Right. That's a real lifestyle for some people. So it ain't just this watered down definition of, oh, if I'm taking my braids out of my head, that means I'm ratchet. You know, da da da. No. And and I just know that sometimes people do things so that they make it seem like, oh, well, that person ain't too Christian. You know what I'm saying? Like they yeah, they're a little more that's, relatable. That's what I, that's what it felt like to me. Yeah, that's because you you felt you felt right. And 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 my whole thing is like. It goes even deeper than that because when we do speak behind the scenes and when it's like, oh, all right, it's all good. Like, you apologizing yeah. and, and you saying it's all good. But then two days later, you come out and you put out shirts uh, oh, looking no. to monetize <laughs> the stuff. Yeah, <laughs> a, a, you know? So yeah, that's crazy. It's just like, if I if I feel convicted about something that I'm putting out there and if I'm like, oh, shoot, I was about to drop some clothes about this, but I really... F- I see that, like, man, I'm tripping, man. I was about to drop some shirts that say Sue Woo on the front. Mm-hmm. But then somebody told me, like, hey, man, you know that that got, like, life and death implications right. tied to it. That's really some some blood some, stuff. Yeah, some gang shit. Oh, for real? Okay, even if I was about to drop them shirts in two days, man, I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? That's Like, that's just how that goes, especially so, if I'm not hurting for no money, which I know you're not hurting for no bread. So it's just like, what? Come on, man. But y'all left off in a good space, though, right? Yeah, it ain't no hate. It ain't no that's, no nothing. You know, he unfollow me. On, he he unfollow me on Instagram. Oh, so I guess you know. Damn, that, not that, the unfollow. You know how that go, right? That mean that mean that mean D. We cool. Nah, that but means, that it means ain't no beef. Petty, but but petty, my petty, yeah, it's my feelings. Petty. Yeah, my feelings. <laughs> It, it then got into did you, it. Now. Did you keep? Did you continue following him? I sure did. That was nice. Cause I love my brother. Okay. Yeah, I have nothing. I have nothing against him. Christian. Am I Christian? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Christian. But is is it a specific? Is it just? I'm 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 non denominational okay. Christian. You know, I grew up Catholic. Okay. So Catholic is very specific. Yes, I'm Catholic. Yeah, there you go. So my whole family Catholic. You know, and I got to a point where in my spiritual journey, I realized that you know what, I am Christian, and there's still a whole lot of the uh, beliefs inside the Catholic faith that I adhere to and that I agree with and everything. But it's just it's not something where I feel like it's that specific to where if you ain't Catholic then you wrong or you living out of the will of God. You know what I mean? So just Christian. I'm about to ask you a real personal question. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. And I might not answer. That's okay. Are you a virgin? Yeah, I'm a virgin, yo. Okay. How old are you? Yeah. If you don't mind saying that. If you don't have to say that part. If you don't yeah, mind 55. You ain't no 55, boy. I ain't no virgin either, but you you, you <laughs> believe that. So you believe that I'm not, you believe that I'm a virgin part. Well, because. Do the, I get virgin no, energy? No, because 10 years ago when you were last on the show, you were. So that's why, that's why I asked. No, I wasn't. Well, what? then you told Chuck that that's, that's what, you that's what, your... says, that's what Chuck said. A uh, virgin? Yeah. Okay. It might have been longer than 10. Okay. Gotcha. Well. Guess who? Guess who in the industry? Guess who I lost my virginity to? No, I'm not. It's a real popular rapper. We said that. I want to say something funny, so I'm not falling for it. <laughs> I'm not falling for it. Whatever. Guess who it was? God, I don't know. <laughs> Yo, I think that's blasphemy. Who? 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 No, nah, I'm just playing with you. I'm just joking. No, but I wish I could be a virgin again. I wish I was a virgin. Um, oh, you regret it? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, having, having a. Uh, you know, having premarital sex uh, out of the will of God is something to where, of course, my flesh is is been pleasing to my flesh and whatnot. But ultimately, there's no way that I can justify stuff that I know isn't right according to God's word, even if it's the even if I'm the person that has taken part in it. So you're basically you're saying. You're doing it, but you know it's wrong, but you're still doing it. <laughs> no, I'm saying that at you, this oh, at, at this point, oh, I'm gonna be uh, what you call it? I, yeah, so I, I'm super uh, I'm super regretful that that I've opened that door because opening that door, if you really want, let me see, it's been a long like it, it was. A, I, I talk about it on on some of my music. Um, when I opened that door for the first time, and it was high school. Mm. Um, 
It was high school. And honestly, uh, when we open a door like that, it can be hard to close it. Mm -hmm. You know, it can be hard to close it. So some things that I have never struggled with ever in my life, drinking and smoking. You know why? Because I never opened those doors. Oh, you never drank and smoked Never before? drank or smoked in my Not life. Not once? Not once. So you catch contact real easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I know you smell this. I mean, honestly, the whole entire square smells like L.A. now because it's weed is legal. But You know what it is, though? My whole family uh, smoke. Mm. My whole family. So I'm used to the smell. Oh, okay. I'm used to it. So maybe I don't catch contact as easily. But right. because I've never done that, that's something that's harder for uh for me to be tempted by, you know? It makes sense. Yeah, so... You can't miss what you never had. You just said it mm -hmm. perfectly. That sounds like a song title. <laughs> For real, no. It's a saying. You can't miss what you've never had. Yeah. So, so that... Can, can I stress this? All right. And what's your name again? Rose D. Rose D. Rose D. Check this out. I am not perfect. I... Am not without struggles and without sin. I was just curious about the verse because the last time you were on the show, you said you was, so I had to, you know. All right, pull pull <laughs> pull that clip up, and okay. you're gonna get well, I, proven. I, I, I didn't see it. Chuck told me to be okay, fair. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> what was that kind of a, like? Chuck hit you like, yeah. So D1 is now, a virgin. I was just about. I was just asking like, well, what is like? Is he Christian or Catholic? And like, cause I know he you started off being Catholic, and Catholic is right. like they're really strong against that kind of stuff, like premarital premarital yeah. sex. I'm a all. gangster. You heard yeah. me. Oh, okay. Growing and nurturing gifts. Serving the Almighty. Okay, that's what I, I mean. I think any any of the, the fact that you, that you even waited to high school. A lot of men, you know, they be in elementary school. Huh? You know what I'm saying? Like that to me is still like, wow, good for you. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but you know more I'm important saying? than that, I'm a rapper and I got a huge platform. I got a lot of people that follow me. That a lot of girls sliding your DM. Um. I don't know because I got my DM set to where if, if you don't if I'm not back, following you go you in the general yeah. category mm -hmm. and I don't even click that button that general mm -hmm. button because that's the streets mm -hmm. when you click that button that it said that's the streets. He said the general yo I'm gonna use that it's so true yo I barely I barely look at that shit I excuse my language I gotta stop cursing I barely look at that stuff because it's it's true because he said that's the streets yo watch this I'm using that watch this can I can I be real with you this is a moment right here. We adapt to what we are around. Mm -hmm. You just said the S word and you caught yourself and you was like, my bad. If I wasn't here, I don't think you would have said, oh, I shouldn't have said that, yeah. da, da, da. You think you yeah, would have said that? Yeah, because I'm really trying hard not to curse. It's really, it's really a problem. Okay, so you recognize that it's a <laughs> yeah, problem in definitely. yourself. Yeah, 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 for sure. I'm going Especially somewhere. Especially for interviews. I'm going somewhere. Not cute. I'm, okay, I'm going somewhere. In hip hop culture, we don't have that self-reflection to where we're like, oh, this ain't cute no more. Oh, we taking it a little too far when it comes to this. And because we don't have that self-reflection and that self-correction, that's where I recognize we got to have people who are bold enough to say, whoa, I love us as a people and I love us as an art form, but we tripping in this way and we really tripping and going a little too far when it comes to that. It's important to have self-awareness. That's, that's all I am, Rose. Situational awareness, you know what I'm saying? You know? For me, especially because I wasn't raised that way. Well, I actually was, but I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be like my mama. So my mama's mouth is like a sailor. Every other word is terrible. Like, terrible. Like, yo, where is the coming? She's mad small. You would never know. It's really unassuming. You would never know. It, but oh, that'd be the one. She's small. She got a chip on her shoulder. She my like, pops is like, yo, why are you talking like that? Da, da, da. Yeah, He's always yeah. telling me. And I'm like, I know. It's, but she got that Napoleon energy. You hear me? Yo. Yeah. Ah, that's that's real. Mm -hmm. So, so thankfully, I don't have a chip on my shoulder getting into the rap game to where it's like, back then they didn't want me. Now I'm hot. They all on me. That'll make you be disrespectful towards women if you got that chip on your it's shoulder, like, like y'all ain't want me back before I was famous. Now that I'm on, y'all want me. That that be having dudes out here disrespecting women. I ain't never struggled in that department. You hear me? I'm not that person that's like, man, I ain't have nothing coming up. So now that I got a little something, you hear me? Y'all going to see all this jewelry. Y'all going to see all these fancy foreigns that I'm buying. And I'm going to stun. I'm going to make it rain all the time. No. I'm the person that's like, yo, I'm doing well and I'm very blessed in that department, but I don't need to flaunt that. You know, I want to teach people how to be financially literate and to actually save your money and invest your money. You know what I mean? To create residual income, to create passive income for yourself. Like, because I don't have any of those 
those type of chips on my shoulder. The only chip I got on my shoulder is knowing that the devil is real. If mm. God is real, the devil is real. So that mm. chip on my shoulder is saying, bet. Oh, and as the devil, oh, you like to use music, you heard me? You, you was the minister of music in heaven. You like to use music to permeate people's brains and their consciousness and had them out here wilding. Man, guess what? I got a chip on my shoulder against you, partner. Like, I'm, I'm finna be in this game. I just dropped my 10th album, and if God say the same, I got 80-something more albums in me, you hear me? I want to put out 93 albums when it's all said and done, straight <laughs> Tell up. Tell me about the album that you just dropped. Are, any, are there any of the songs that you mentioned before going to be on them? What songs I mentioned? You mentioned um, a few features with Game and... Um, oh, yeah, the Game. Uh, the song with the Game is on the album. It's okay, called right. Shine On. Okay. Ooh, that song called. Cool. That song is called, cool, yo. What's your favorite song on the album? My favorite song on the album currently is called Your Story Is Your Glory. Okay. Yeah. I would... Man, let me... I would spit something. Go ahead. All right. Look, I say you got to tell your story so they can appreciate your glory. Michael Jordan ain't got more rings than Robert Ory. Everybody's path is different. We all got a story. I never fit into nobody's box or category. When I do me to the fullest, the people can't ignore me. I soak up game from real ones. They came before me. I'm not for everybody, and everyone ain't for me. But those who really get to see my heart, they adore me. And that's just the chorus, you heard me? I say, nice. using this pencil to scribble what's in my mental. Got famous on accident. Was just trying to be influential. Unless you serving the devil, I promise I'm not against you. My heaviest competition is reaching my full potential. I had a deal with cash money, but I never signed it. Before I got into this game, I knew my assignment. Mission vision, baby. I refuse to be blinded. Never chasing clout. I'm looking for divine alignment. I grinded, scrutinized my skills, made improvements. Now I own apartment complex. You need a unit? I'm out in Munich, Germany, then in Rotterdam, Amsterdam, Manchester, London with a lot of fans, making memories with my brethren. I pray my dead homies singing melodies in heaven. And don't be scared for me. You know who I'm fighting for. It's in my name, yeah. Uno, underdogs and outcasts. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that's that was light. dope. That's that was light. Dope. That, the, the... A, lot of, do you, a lot of your friends ask you for advice? Uh, no, because I don't surround myself with people who are just in need of me. Well, not just always in need, but I, I just, I just can, I can imagine a lot of people coming to you and asking for advice. Yeah, a lot. Of, I have like, just, I, like people, you know, and just yeah. in general, like they need somebody, they will call you. A lot of uh, yeah. I, so I, I'm there for people. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm there for people. So yes, uh, absolutely. And I say this. I know I'm in the right industry because it would be one thing if I had strong opinions about the industry, but if my skill set wasn't on par with the people in the industry. Because it, it could be, you know, it, it look bad when you just want to be a critic and you want you, you come across like a hater, you know what I mean? Right. You hating on these people probably because yeah. you can't rap or because you, you, you ain't got no skill. It hit different when it's like, man, I'm booked, you heard me, booked and busy all the time. When you throw that beat on, I'm going to spit with the best of them, no matter who it is in the game. And despite all of that, and got these, got, look, hold on. You know, so like, got it to where it's like. You look crazy. Yeah, you know, like, like these, <laughs> yeah, so. When it's like, oh, I rock with these people. These are people that's in, you could, like, who that was I just showed you on that camera? Mace, Kodak Black, and uh, I forgot the third one. La Boosie. Boosie, yeah. Yeah, like, this, this is a blessing that real recognize real, yo. But I feel like when you truly love somebody, you can celebrate them, but you can also say, hey, I'm going to celebrate you, but I also want to help elevate you. And the way to help elevate you is to show you transformative love, not just affirmative love. Affirmative love is just saying, I'm just going to compliment you all day. Everything you do is just great. Right. No. Nobody, I mean, nobody real wants anybody around that, like that. So. But I, I think a lot of people, the more powerful you get, uh, it's hard to have people around you that's challenging you, unless you respect them. And these people, by the grace of God, a lot of them respect me as like, man, this dude, I mean, D1 walking the walk. Like, he not just talking. It. Like, he been in hip-hop for a long time. He handling his business. And he a beast. And he's saying this stuff, he got my ear. And I'm so thankful to God for that opportunity. So these type of platforms mean a lot. You know what I mean? Chuck? Chuck a real one. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know. <laughs> I know. Okay. Why do you think I'm here? Shh. 
<laughs> How long have you been knowing Chuck for? Oh, I started, so when I was working on the community, I used to book him on the show that I uh, produced for. Okay. Mm -hmm. You that still ain't answered my question. How long that was? Like over 10 years. Oh, all right. Oh, yeah. so yeah, so you know. Yeah, yeah. I've been knowing Chuck about that amount of time. Chuck years. a real over one, yo. Over 10 years, yeah. Chuck a real one. Yep. They got certain real ones. Sway, mm -hmm. that's a real one. We talked yeah. about Sway off air. Mm -hmm. They got certain real ones in this game to where it's like, oh, you've been strategically placed to where you so much in the culture that they can't get rid of you. You know right. what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. your skill set is amazing, but you not of this culture. You recognize that you got a bigger purpose and a bigger mission, so you're going to stand on all 10 when it's time to. And that right there, I've been able to identify those other people, you know? And they probably got more, but a lot of people, and I'm not going to say this about you, because you come across real confident. You come across really good at what you do. Like, I'm having fun doing this interview. Dope. That's my main thing. So yeah. Fun with it. Well, watch this. There's so many people who work on the business side of the music industry that have never been cool until they worked in the industry. Mm. They have never been cool. So a lot of people in the music industry either have low morals, they have a low level of discipline, mm -hmm. or... Or low self-esteem. Low self-esteem. You took the words out of my mouth. That's a lot of DJs out here. There you go. And because of that, they... <laughs> they, they, would be, they would be such dorks if they didn't have... If they wasn't behind that freaking... Come on. Talk they would be such dorks, y'all. But it's not Take just... Take that us. away from them and you put them in a room. It's with a bunch of other people. They would It would blend right in. She talking that talk. Just she saying. talking that talk. And, and, and shout and, out to... Don't get... It's none of my friends, though. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's some music industry executives. It's people... <laughs> it's a lot of people in this industry that it's like, come on, man. Y'all... That's why you cling on to this title so mm. much because this is your validation. Mm. It's the it's the never-ending pursuit of what's cool, of wanting to be cool that these people in the industry are on. And it's because and because of that, they are degrading who we are, specifically as black people, and just degrading what hip-hop culture was called to be because they some dorks get in powerful positions and then they just gonna hog that position. They gonna they gonna ball hog that position forever. And my thing is like, man, not on my watch. Mm. That part. So name of album, where can they get it? The name of the album is Uno. Okay. Uno is an acronym. Platform? It's on all platforms. Uno stands for underdogs and outcasts. Okay. You hear me? That's what this album is dedicated to. My tenth album. All platforms. Uh also, I wish I brought one uh for you, but I gave the last one to Sway. I also am an author now. I just put out my first Congratulations. book. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's a children's book. It's an anti-bullying hip-hop children's book. That's so fire. It's called David Found His Slingshot. I used, <laughs> I used to get bullied when I was in kindergarten. Really? Yeah, I used to get bullied. And what I had to do to overcome that bullying was really tap into uh, what my slingshot was. And your slingshot is just a metaphor for knowing what your God-given gifts are, right? When you tap into your skills and your talents, that right there, when you use it for the right purpose, it'll help you defeat a lot of the enemies, or I like to call and them navigate Goliaths. navigate through all that, yeah. Yeah, go, navigate through all the Goliaths that exist in this world. So my book is out. That is only available on my website, okay. which is missionvisionlifestyle.com. MissionVisionLifestyle.com. That's where I sell all my merch at, and that's where I sell my books at. Uh, I'm 100% independent. Definitely got to support. Amazing, yeah. Thank you, yo. Um, this been this been great. We uh, we you know we came in here as strangers, but I feel like at this point we we know each other uh a little better. Hopefully, hopefully you can hear my heart behind everything that I say and do. I do. Trust me. I have really that's one of my gifts. I can tell whether somebody's real or not. Mm. Telling the truth. Mm. Or who they who they if they are who they really say that they are, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Um, that's why I like doing these interviews. I like talking to people. I like learning from people and getting a perspective on life in general. You know what I mean. So I need you to try to link me with Mano. <laughs> try to link me with Jim Jones. That you got a little bit of industry in you there. I don't know. That's a little bit of industry right there, D1. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a little bit of industry right <laughs> there. So I need you to do for me. All right, 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 right. Well, look, look. Uh, listen, listen. If not, I can, I will. Listen, I'm not even saying out. that because it's not about doing no feature. If they want to do music no, together, no, no, no. I cool. hear you. I hear you. I was, just, I was playing. I had to say Yeah, it yeah, was, yeah. No, you got me. You got that New York slick talk. You definitely be taking shots. You took about eight shots at me during this interview. <laughs> no, I didn't. And you cut me off. You was like, oh, oh, I ain't done yet. I was like, oh, that's that New York, boy. So I'm going to shut up now. I'm no, a Southern no, no, boy. I know, I know when it. to be quiet. I, I think you dropped a lot of gems. I think a lot of people can learn from you, especially, you know, artists in the industry. And I think that those conversations need to be had you know what i'm saying because even if they don't change completely their music i'm sure they'll get a gem or two and 
be inspired in some ways, you know? There you go, you, Rose, Rose D. You, I really do think so. You hit the nail on the head. Everybody ain't going to make a 180 degree change. But when you get exposed to the truth or when you get exposed to the light that you've been in need of or in search of in your life, you will never forget it. Mm-hmm. And because you won't forget it, it's always going to sit in your spirit. So when you when you acting and behaving uh, opposite so, of right. that, you're going to feel convicted deep down. Mm-hmm. And that 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 sense of conviction is the first step towards evolution and changing. 